Hi guys and welcome to another Bootstrap 4 video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well we're going to continue on today with our Bootstrap basics. We've built this site here and yesterday we put this carousel, sliding carousel in and what we did we put our a sort of opaque background behind our carousel caption here. Um, which is fine, works great, but I prefer it if we just had a sort of darker overlay over this image and got rid of that. So the whole thing was just slightly darker so this caption stands out. And I'll show you how to do that today. It's pretty easy, we're going to use a bit of CSS using the after pseudo. So let's have a look what we've got here. Here's our folder that we created for our site. Here's our index HTML site, which is basically our page structure here. Here's the custom CSS file we created, which is dictating the styles that we have on our site here. There's the images that we use for our slider and our logo, and we're not actually using those two images at the moment. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our index HTML and our custom HTML with a text editor. I'm using brackets. Brackets is a free text editor. It's got some great free features and you can download it from a link below this video. And as I say, it's free and it's got some fantastic features, but any text editor will do. So if you use a different one, you can follow along just as well with this. So here we've got our custom CSS style sheet and here's the styles for our slider that we wrote yesterday and I'm going to comment out that background bit which is the opaque background that sort of dark move this one back out of the way that sort of dark see-through background we've got behind our carousel caption there so comment it out star forward slash and at the other end uh, sorry is forward slash star and at the other end star forward slash where you want it to stop and in that way this won't be read as code anything between the the two forward slashes there as you can see it's grayed it out it'll no longer read that if I hit control s and we go back to our site and I refresh this dark background should disappear there we go and the reason we put it there in the first place was that you can't really read that. I mean, you can if you look hard enough, but it's not really legible. And I need it to stand out so it's very easily to read. Let's have a look at our other slides. That was not so bad. And again, that was not so bad, but they all need a bit of help. And it's few different ways you can do this you can take your images put them into your favorite photo editor like Photoshop or GIMP or whatever you use just put a slightly darker overlay on top so that'll make that stand out but we're gonna do it with CSS today so let's get started we're still in the slider section so I'm not gonna add a new title just going to drop down a couple and I'm going to give it a give a class name or make a class name of DRK kind of short for dark and then I'm going to put a colon no space between the K of dark or DRK and the colon and then again no space between the colon and after which is what I'm going to write now because we're using the pseudo class of after and we're going to put this on our carousel to make it a full width dark background so the first thing we've got to do and don't worry about copying what I'm doing on the screen here I'll put this CSS code below the video if you want to use it you can use it manipulate it use it how you want if you need to so we, first thing we need to say is what we want there and it's going to be content colon and you just put some empty inverted commas in there and a semicolon afterwards just to denote there's going to be some content there now we want it to tell it that it wants to fill out the whole space so we want to say display block 
This may not make a lot of sense while I'm typing it out here, but once I show you, it, it's pretty obvious what things are doing. Position's got to be absolute. It's got to be exactly where we want it. So we're going to say position, absolute. Now, I always put a semicolon after your code. If it's the last one in the line, you don't need to, but I do it out of habit. Because if you don't, uh, when it uh, when the browser reads the CSS file, it won't read past that last one. So if I missed one off here, it would read that, and that's where it would stop. It wouldn't go any further, so we'd lose anything below there. Okay, now we've told it we want it to be in absolutely the position that we tell it to be in. We've got to give it the position we want to be in. So from the top, I want it to be zero picks from the top. And we're going to do this throughout. So top zero, I want it zero pixels from the bottom. And same with left. And similar, of course, with the right hand side. So basically, that's telling it it's going to fill up all the space, no gaps. Now, lastly, we've got to tell it what color we actually want. So I'm going to say background. Now you can use any color you want. I'm going to use black. We might switch that out in a minute just to see what the different colors will do. So black is at 000, zero, zero with hex. Well, it's actually six zeros, but with CSS3, you just need to put three if they're all the same. Okay, and that's going to make it totally black, which is not what we want. We want it a bit see-through, so we're going to say opacity. And then give it a number or, or a decimal somewhere between 0 0.1 and 0, or 0 0.1 and 1, or 0 0.9, because 1 is fully visible. So let's try something like 0 0.6, not 0.6. So that's halfway we can always adjust it afterwards and that's pretty much going to do everything we need to do now we just need to add this class to what it is we want to affect which is our carousel item so let's say that control s let's go to our index.html and here's our carousel here's our carousel items one two three and if you want to add a fourth, just simply control C to copy, control V, and you can paste it underneath just like that. But I don't need a fourth, but if you did want one, you need to do that. And you can add another slide, 0, 1, 2, so the next one will be 3, obviously. Okay, so let's get rid of that. And of course, if you didn't want, if you just wanted two slides when you select the opening div it'll select the closed one just delete the one you don't want and of course if you've only got two you want to just get rid of one of these indicators here so just delete the last one there okay so we're good I forgot what I'm doing okay yeah I was gonna add that class of dark to one of our uh, carousel items well let's use the first one seeing as is that first uh, so carousel item, I'm just going to put it between them. I can put it after the active if I want, but I'll put it between them. And the class was DRK for dark. And make sure there's a space between that one and this one. You can have multiple classes. There's no problem with that at all. Control S to say, let's just make sure it was DRK. Yep, DRK, fine. So everything's saved. Let's go back to our site. Now when I refresh, the first slide should have a slightly dark darker background overlay on the image there it is let's refresh see it's gone a lot darker and you can read this a lot better that way um, and you can still see the image that's pretty good actually I thought I was gonna have to adjust the opacity or opacity but I think that's actually okay let's just inspect this I'm using Google Chrome here and we'll get our inspector up and let's have a look see what we've got here 
There's the carousel control. There's the carousel inner. Here's our carousel dark. Here's our code. Right, here's our, just pull that up just a little bit. Here's our background, our code, if you see the dark after, the pseudo element. Let's change the opacity to maybe three, see if we actually need as much as six. So let's wait till it comes around. There it is right there. I'm gonna put my mouse over it so it stops. And I'm gonna change that six to a three that lightened it up a bit that's actually still quite legible and we can still see most of the photo let's try perhaps if we give it four we, I'm just selecting it and I'm rolling my mouse wheel when I've got it over the top of it 1.3 that's made it completely black obviously let's put a four in there and it's about to come round Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, let's try five. So I think five is great. I mean, that, you can still see the, the image really well. If we put it back to where it was, which was six, that was a pretty good guess, actually. I thought six would be a little too much. There's our six. I mean that's pretty good I quite like it but it's entirely up to you I'm gonna take that back to five well I'm not gonna take it back I'm gonna do it in the correct CSS and we'll add that attribute or that class to our other slides so you can see them I mean that one's not too bad but I'll just add it to keep consistent so let's go back to our text editor in our custom CSS I'm going to change that to five six was pretty good but I think five's slightly better now what we need to do is control s to save that CSS change let's just add our dark class I'm copying the gap to the end of the K control C to copy and I'm going to add it to our other carousel items so they've got it as well Control S to save. Refresh. Now all of our slides should have this. There we go. And I think that's fine. You can read the writing really well. And you can still see the image behind absolutely perfectly as well. Now we could change that background color to whatever color you want. You could change it to blue or something like that. And it'll do different effects let's just put blue in there and see what happens but I think for me black's gonna work because it's always a great tint okay control s to save it's kinda of giving it that that blue tint which works pretty well but that's a little too much for me make it a dark blue say uh, still probably not dark enough for me what if we use that blue that we were using before which was this one which is a very dark blue well, I just copied that and let's just put this hex code in here let's back to the site Let's refresh see what it looks like that's not too bad that's okay actually but like I say I think personally I preferred the black yeah that works actually works quite well but I'm gonna go with the black and obviously you do exactly what you want to do yeah I like that better the black for me okay so there you have it there's your colored overlay the only other thing is 
if you still wanted to have something behind there you can do that just as easily what we did we commented this out we commented that out there the RGB let's just copy that in fact, I want all of that the RGBA code control C and let's create a new class of uh, CCD control control caption dark it's kind of for that I better put a dot before that as it's a class a dot or a period always if it's a class and open and close some curlies and in between them paste that bit of code the background now if I add that CCD class to one of our carousel captions we'll have that back black background as well so control s let's do it to number two say so here's number one here's number two here's the carousel caption let's just add the class of ccd carousel caption dark is what i call it i think control s back to our site and let's just refresh now our second slide should now have that dark background did i refresh then there we go first slide second slide and you see you've got that dark background back again and you can use it on any of these slides and you still got that one in the background or you can take that one away if you want to simple enough to do and that was number two wasn't it we just need to take that DRK away from that particular carousel item and you'll just have that this will now be lighter color let's get on to that second slide there we go so you've just got your background so there's some options for you like I say I kind of prefer the whole background overlay like that kind of works for me but sometimes you want to emphasize stuff so it's nice to put a uh, background behind your captions so I hope you've enjoyed that in our next video what we're going to do we'll add some call to action buttons to this little section right here and we'll also work on some alignment as well so you can align this left or right or however you want to do it but we'll add some call to action buttons next so I hope you've enjoyed that if you have please give it a thumbs up share comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're interested in web development have a look down below we've got some great free courses down there as well as some premium courses with some huge discounts for our YouTube subscribers so do check it out once again this has been Jamie with system 22 and web design and tech tips .com. thanks for watching have a great day